Hi, I'm Kendra Little from Redgate Software. And in this quick demo, I'm gonna show you how you can configure SQL change automation to import changes using the exact schema scripting options that you want. Now we have some online documentation for this. It's in an article titled Configuring Comparison and Script Generation Options. But as you can see, it's not the fastest read. If you'd love to read, check out that article. But if you just want to see a quick demo, here's how this goes. Let's say I want to create a new project. So here in Visual Studio, under new project, I'm going to say I want to, uh, I can click on my SQL change automation project or just click create new project. I've got SQL change automation project highlighted there, and I'm just going to create something for the Microsoft free sample database pubs that they publish a script for online. So I'm just doing a new project for that and creating a new local get repo for that as well. And SQL change automation gets everything all set and starts creating my project for me. And it's going to pop up a wizard that I can use to create a baseline. But what if I don't wanna use the default scripting options for my baseline? I don't want to get started yet. Well, here's the trick. I can go ahead and click this X in the top right button before I ever baseline, and I can change my settings and then come back and do my baseline. So just because there's not a close button down here, I can click that button at the top right. And SQL change automation has already created in Visual Studio, it's already created my project here, which I, I created in a new solution. I can edit the options for that before I ever baseline. And the way to do that is we wanna right click on the project name and then go down here and click unload project because I want to edit the .sql proj file. So now that I've closed it, it says unavailable, but I'm gonna right click again and now I'm going to say edit the SQL proj file. So we're gonna go ahead and edit that. You don't have to edit this file in Visual Studio, but it is kind of nice to have color coding, right? We don't get that if we just edit it in Notepad. Now, one of the nice things about editing in here and that color coding is it's easier to see comments in here. So we can see things in here like, here's the offline schema model options. What we want though is the SQL change automation script generation options. And notice that everything in here is a bunch of comments. That's important because I didn't notice that those were comments at first. And I did prove that if you change a comment, Nothing happens if you change a comment in your SQL proj file, which is functioning as designed. But if we wanna change some of these options, we should actually change our comments. So the defaults in here that I wanna change are, I want to change the option for ignoring collation. So I'm gonna copy that option up and just paste it here in the comment group. And I do not want to ignore collations. Let's say that I've got a database and I have generated this in the background. In the background, I've created a copy of the pubs sample database, and I have made two columns in the publishers table use a non-default collation. I decided that a couple of columns in my publishers table were gonna be French. And I also added page compression to an index on, let's see, it's on the title author table in my pubs database there. So let's go back and let's find the option for compression in here as well. There's one about uh, data compression. That's in this section where it suggests maybe these are more of interest to a DBA. So I'm gonna go down here and here's my data compression option. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy that out, move it up to the non-commented portion up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, I don't want you, I'm gonna make that false. I don't want you to ignore data compression. So now I'm gonna go ahead and save. I just did control S to save. I'm gonna close my SQL proj file. And then over here on pubs, I'm gonna say reload my project because I am done editing that. Now that I've made that change, I can go ahead and run my baseline, which should use those defaults, which I have modified by adding those properties. So I can open my SQL change automation project window again. And if I happen to have closed it, you know, I can go back up to a window and just reopen it. It's just fine. And say, finish setting up my project. And now I really want to get started. So I'm going to use as my deployment target that pubs database. 
Let's imagine that pub's database is a restore of my production environment. And I happen to have a development environment I've already been working in named pubs dev. So not spending a lot of time explaining these. We do that in other videos, but my development environment is the pubs dev database a representative of my production environment, AKA my deployment target is the database just named pubs. And I'm gonna go ahead, click next, and then create baseline to have it read in from that pubs database. Hey, what are all of the objects in the pubs database? And then we'll look at our development database too and be like, how does development match up with <laughs> that production pubs? So we now, it went ahead and SQL change automation has imported things. And I now have my baseline script. I've got a programmable objects folder and I've got my offline schema model. So let's just take a peek in the offline schema model. And let's see the, I believe the publishers table was one of the ones that I had messed around with there. Yes, the publishers table. Because I changed that default, it said, oh, I should be interested in collation. And we can see that, in fact, the column city and state do have that collation that I specified. And that collation is different than what I've specified on other columns. And then I think it was the title author table where I had specified compression on that um, index. And sure enough, here it is on my constraint primary key clustered. Sure enough, we have data compression equals page because I said, hey, I do want you to care about that. If you'd like to check out a list of what the schema comparison options are, you can check them out in the documentation online. Or if you want to view them in the SQL proj file itself, all you have to do to view them is we can go ahead and say, Let's see, I want to unload that project and then I want to edit pubs.sql file. And if you scroll through and look at these comments in here as well, you can see the variety of different schema scripting options that you might care about. Now you might wonder, hey, don't I care about data compression all the time? Well, it depends who you are. The reason that these options may need to be changed is that we set the defaults for what we think are the majority of users. Because a lot of users, they set their data compression options in production and then maybe don't set them in every other environment. This used to be even more complicated, right? Because only in SQL Server 2016 Service Pack, I think it's Service Pack 2, did we get the ability to use data compression against non-enterprise editions like standard edition two. So things change over time and we try to pick the defaults that are the best for everybody. But in your case, there may be an option or two that you wanna tweak on a given project. I'm Kendra Little for Redgate Software, and I hope that this demo has been helpful about how to change the SQL compare skipped it, scripting schema options in a SQL change automation project in Visual Studio. Bye folks.